Hello everyone. Um, so just before we start, I'd like to thank the EuroPython organizers for this awesome event. Uh, it's been like five years that we're sponsoring it and it's always a great pleasure. Uh, I also want to thank Eric Smith, the author of this pip, for all his work on Python and also for his uh, unexpected answers to my emails. So uh, thank you, Eric. Um, so my name is Guillaume Jolin. Um, if you want to find me on the internet, uh, I'm called Ramnes. Uh, so if you want to add me on LinkedIn, Facebook, any, anything, uh, ramnes.eu is the place. I'm working uh, as a lead uh, software engineer at Numbly. Numbly is a data marketing uh, company. We have a booth uh, at the Minus 2 floor, so feel free to, to come and see us. Uh, as a lot of company around, we are recruiting, so if you're searching for a job, you're welcome. Uh, just a quick word before we really go into it. Uh, I started playing with data classes not so long ago, uh, so please don't take my word for everything I say. Uh, I made as much, as much research as I could uh, to give you the best talk possible. Uh, and the more, research, uh, the more research I did on the subject and the more I wanted to add uh, on this talk. So it's a bit long. Uh, I'm not sure we'll have time for questions, but if you have some, feel free to, to come at the booth and to, uh, to hit me up. Uh, all right, so it's going to be pretty fast. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah? Okay, let's go. So let's go back uh, one week uh, before. I was uh, in vacations uh, in the south of France, uh, uh, near the sea, and that was great. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like an, an entrepreneurial guy, so I was thinking, uh, what startup could I launch today? So the first thing you, you, you look at when you're uh, searching for a, uh, to build a startup is a domain name, right? Uh, so I found this domain name, which is amazing.com. <laughs> Uh, I thought it's, it's a good domain name, I bought it, and, um, and I thought I, I could make money out of it, right? Uh, so I want to, my idea is to make uh, a marketplace of, uh, of, of seller and buyers, uh, and to have that marketplace, I need uh, an inventory of all the items I have, right? So I have a friend who told me, uh, well, Python 3 is not great, it's slower than Python 2, you should, you should use Python 2. So uh, it's been a, a long time that I didn't use Python, and, but I remember like this name tuple thing, right? So the first thing I did was to create some uh, items uh, in my inventory uh, with that name tuple, uh, and it was great, it did the job. Uh, but as my code base went larger and larger, uh, I ended up doing like not really DRI things, uh, repeating a lot of stuff, uh, and, and one thing really annoyed me is that I couldn't define defaults. So uh, I took a look at Python 3, and um, so yeah, missing properties defaults. Uh, I took a look at Python 3, and uh, I, I discovered that new version of name tuple, uh, which you don't apart from um, collections, but from typing, and which has uh, uppercase letters. Um, so it arrived in Python 3.5, uh, and the annotation support that you can see here arrived in uh, Python 3.6. Um, so it's, it's, it's way better because uh, rather than calculating every time my, my total cost of, of all the items I have in my inventory, uh, I can define that function once uh, and then call it whenever I need. Uh, and I have some kind of default too, like I have a default quantity, which is zero. Uh, but the problem is, what happens if my mutable, uh, if my default is a mutable, like uh, if it's a list, for example. Let's say I want to, for my items, I want to have all the related items uh, to that item, so I want a list of items. Uh, if I define it directly uh, in the class, just like I, just like I did for quantity, uh, it's not going to work very well because each time I'm going to uh, modify uh, the list in an instance, it's going to be modified in all instances, so it's not that great. So uh, I thought like maybe I could like overload uh, the new, uh, the dunder new method uh, so that 
when I get my real estate items, I check if, it, if it's there or not. If it's not there, I create an empty list, and that's how I do my default. But sadly, uh, that version of NateTuple uh, doesn't follow that. Like, it, and, and it's weird because uh, Python used to be much more permissive than that, right? So we're almost there, but not yet. <laughs> so um, what I thought I could do, because I, I don't like when people like tell me, no, you can't do that, is to define a, a real new method, to assign it to the new method, and, and it works. Well, it's a bit creepy, right? So yeah, nothing to see here. Please move on. So this is the idea behind PAPE 557. It's to provide uh, a, real, um, a real data class uh, that you could use for that kind of stuff. So it arrived in Python 3.7. Uh, it's available in Python 3.6 through a backport called data classes, which is on GitHub. Uh, and that's great because you can take a look at the source code, so very interesting. It's made by Eric Smith, uh, which is the owner of a small IT business uh, in, in New York uh, tr called uh, Trueblade. Uh, what they do is mostly written in Python. Eric is a co-developer of CPython, the author uh, of several major contributions, including uh, STF formats and F-strings. Uh, he started to use Python a long time ago to escape C, but ended up doing a lot of C to cut Python. Uh, and uh, he's happy because that class is actually a place where he could code in the standard library in Python and actually use f string that he also coded himself. So that's great. So what uh, Eric wanted is something that sounds and, uh, and feels like name tuples, uh, but with real real defaults uh, and that can be mutable because name tuples are immutable, right? So he created data class. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen that example already. Uh, so if you, if you compare it to the, the, the example with the name tuple, it's, it's really close, right? There is, the only difference is that you don't have the name tuple inheritance, but in place you have uh, the data class decorator uh, and the reason it choose uh, the decorator is to avoid uh, inheritance uh, so that you don't have uh, diamond problems. Uh, and also decorators are, are a great way to inject methods inside a class. Uh, and maybe this is something that we'll see more and more in the standard library. Uh, also, data classes are meant to be used with type annotations. Uh, so it's Python 3.7 and Python 3.6, so annotations are there, they are there to be used. So think of it. So what data class give you, the decorator, it injects uh, init, uh, dunder init method, and dunder init representation, dunder init string. Uh, what the init gives you is that uh, for each field that you've defined, uh, it will uh, expect them uh, to be given at the instanti instantiation time. Um, the representation is pretty good also. It's kinda homoiconic, like you can evaluate it itself. Uh, also, you have an explicit hash saying that, like the explicit hash is hash equal none, uh, saying that you can't hash a data class. And, it's, uh, and it has a lot of metadata like uh, Dunder data class fields that contains uh, all the field names, the types, the default values, the field options, uh, all the data classes. Uh, you have another uh, metadata which is uh, Dunder data class param uh, that contains all the parameters uh, that were used to generate the class, but we'll see that after. So uh, when I speak about real defaults, uh, oh yes, it's almost properly aligned. Um, so here for the related items example, uh, so I've made, uh, I've used field, which is uh, something that you import from data classes. And it gives you an option, which is default factory, which you can give like any function. Uh, here I just want to instantiate a list each time 
uh, I instantiate um, uh, an item, and uh, it's working just as expected, as, 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 as we can see. So that's great. Uh, there is that dunder post init method, which is specific to, uh, to data classes, uh, or not, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, and it's great because uh, you can sp specify things like if we don't want the total cost to be a property, for example, we can compute it only once here and then just use it when we want. Uh, what we only have to do is to define the field directly uh, on top, on the top. Uh, the init false is to say that don't expect that field uh, at instantiation, instantiation time, I have very hard time to pronounce this. Um, just, just expect it to be created later. Uh, so, for example, in the post init, you can freeze data classes. So you can pass uh, frozen equal true, uh, and that does what you expect it to do. Uh, which means that if you try to modify a field. It will, uh, it will uh, raise an error, uh, B1, so uh, real, uh, real fr freezing in Python is really hard. Uh, there is like real hacks to, to change this. So one hack is to, uh, is to use object dot uh, under uh, And this is actually uh, useful because if you want a field to be computed at the instance instantiation time, but you don't want it to be modifiable be, uh, after, you can do it that way. And it's actually the recommended way by Eric. <laughs> so um, feel free to use it. Uh, also, like I said, by default, uh, dunder hash equal none. So by default, you can't use uh, data classes as uh, keys for dicks, for example. Uh, but if you really want to, you can use the option unsafe hash. Uh, and you can also, inside fields, define which field you want to be considered in the hash or not. For example, here, I'm saying that related items is, uh, is not to consider into the hash, because I think that uh, related items is a multiple list, and it's maybe going to change very often. So I don't want my hash to be fucked up. So uh, I'm not going to take it into account. I'm just going to consider name and unit price. And so if I ins instantiate three uh, three items, uh, two hammers uh, with the same price, and one spammer, one spanner, uh, then if I try to make a set out of it, we see that effectively we have two uh, two items and not three. Uh, also, uh, so for those who don't know MyPy, uh, MyPy is an experimental optional static type checker for Python. Uh, what it does, it, it analyzes uh, the code without running it and uses uh, annotations to detect when incorrect types are used. Uh, so data class works well with MyPy. Uh, that being said, the, the version of MyPy that handles uh, data classes is not released yet. So it will be released pretty soon, but it works. Uh, and if for some reason you want to, to go back to that name tuple way of uh, doing things, you can. There is a make data class function. Uh, the only difference with uh, collections.nameTuple is that uh, you can give uh, type hints, and you can also give defaults uh, and fields options, uh, just, just like I showed before. Um, and it's basically the same as the name tuple uh, behavior. Uh, also, one great thing is that uh, if you want to go back from your data classes to more standard types like dicts or tuples, you have helpers for this. Uh, so as dict and as tuples inside uh, data classes allows you to do that. The order is defined by the field definition orders. So if you define the name first in, in your class and then the price in second, then you'll have that order in your dicts and tuples. So that's pretty great, right? Uh, we have uh, exactly what we want. Uh, it's full uh, DRI. We have properties, everything we want. That's, that's really great. But uh, let's go back in time uh, a second time. Maybe what I've showed you remembers you something. Maybe you've seen already a library called ATTRs, or I don't know how to pronounce it. 
but ADT Air or something. Uh, so it's uh, Python 2.7 and 3.4 plus uh, library that you can install on PIP, obviously. Uh, it's made by Inex uh, Schlawak, uh, that maybe is here. Yay, please give him a big hand. No, he's not. Well, he's in the Python, but not in this room. But um, the ATTL library is really what uh, the, the, the original idea of data classes, right? So Eric, when he, want, when he created uh, the, the, the data classes PEP, he went through a lot of mails, issues, etc. of 80 tiers uh, to understand uh, their uh, decision making, uh, what choice, what trade-off did they took. Uh, and as you can see, it's really, really close uh, to data classes, right? You have that attr.s, which is the equivalent of data classes. Uh, you have that attr.ib, which, uh, which allows you to give a default. Uh, so that's really, really similar, uh, but it's much more powerful. It gives you much more methods. Uh, as you can see, there is init, rep, str, egg, hash, but you also have uh, n, e, l, t, l, e, g, t, g, etc. Um, it's, it has validators, which are not present in uh, data classes. Uh, so for example, here I have a price. Uh, and I don't want an item to be uh, over nine thousand dollars, so I can just validate that with uh, the small snippet, uh, and it used the, the decorators setters for that. It's pretty pretty smart. Um, you also has uh, built-in, uh, well, built-in AT tier uh, validators like instance of, which allows you to. Uh, dynamically uh, verify the, the type of your, uh, of your field, and not just with MyPy or some static uh, analyzer thing. You also have converters. Converters, like for example, if you're working with uh, external APIs, and you, you know that uh, the types on, on that external API are fucked up, uh, but you want in your database to have proper types, then you can use uh, a conver the converter option of attr.ib, uh, which means, by the way, attrib like attribute. Uh, I, I took one hour to understand that. Uh, so right now you may be wondering, like, why I would use data classes if attr is doing basically the same thing and it's much more powerful, right? Uh, and this is answered in the PEP, actually. Uh, so the ID is ATTR is a third party library that wants to keep its freedom to move uh, fast uh, and to implement any features they want to implement. Also, uh, Python is really oriented towards simplicity uh, and a lot of features that are in uh, ATTR are not useful like 100% of the time. So I don't know you, but personally, I tend to uh, value a lot simplicity. Uh, so if I don't need the extra features, I'm mostly going to uh, use data classes. Uh, and also, I prefer uh, data classes syntax, uh, which is, I feel, uh, much more clear, because eight, uh, as we just shown before, uh, AT tier syntax is a bit strange. Uh, but hey, I guess it's just a, a matter of, of uh, personal preference, right? So uh, let's go back to uh, my wonderful uh, amazing.com website. Um, what if I had a NoSQL database behind, right? Uh, something like MongoDB. The, the data class example wouldn't work because uh, in a schemaless database, you don't know the field in advance or you can know them, but you want to have the freedom of letting someone modifying them directly in the database uh, without, uh, without it breaking all your uh, code base. So here we can't use databases, uh, data classes, right? So for example, with MongoDB, uh, if we connect to the database and get a document inside uh, a collection, we get a dictionary. The problem with dictionaries is that it misses uh, real uh, object-oriented programming types. So for example, if I have 
uh, users on the side and, and items on the other side, uh, if both are dict, how do I know which, which one is what? Like, do I just check the fields? Like, I, I'd prefer to be able to do like is instance of user or is instance of uh, item. You miss properties. And also the dot notation, because the dict notation where you have uh, like braces everywhere is a bit cumbersome. So one smart guy could make, um, it could inherit from dict and just make the properties that would work. Uh, that's, that's a bit creepy also. Uh, so we're not going to stay on this. Uh, and there is a thing called uh, simple namespaces. It's uh, in a module called types. So there is collections, typing, and types. It's not the same thing. Uh, and that simple namespace uh, class is, is really neat. You can see it like uh, um, a, bare, a very bare version of data classes. It just gives uh, an init method and, uh, and a representation uh, dunder method uh, to the class that inherits from it. And what's great is that it doesn't ask you to define fields. So in case of the MongoDB example, it's, it's nice. Uh, because you can just take your uh, whatever is your dict and just throw it inside your class and 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 you have the the hohop type you have the dot notation and you have the properties um, but one thing that's missing here is that we can't go back to normal types we can't we can't uh, we can't have a dict out of a simple namespace we can't have a, a tuple uh, so you should end up doing that kind of stuff Maybe we could have something more powerful. Uh, there is that library called Box, uh, which is on GitHub that you can install on people also, uh, which is basically a, a, a wrapper around dict. Uh, it works a bit like simple namespace, uh, but you can you you have a method like to underscore dict that allows you to go back to a dict. I think, if I'm not wrong, that there is also a two-tuple method. Not so sure about it, but maybe. Um, and the great thing about Box also is that if you have dicts inside dicts inside dicts, it's going to uh, to take the whole thing and to make Box out of everything. So you can do uh, item one dot item two dot item three, etc. Uh, but the problem with Box is that it's super slow. Uh, I'm not really much into performance usually, but uh, here it's uh, really problematic. Um, so, as we as you can see here, um, like uh, here, the, it's a micro benchmark uh, which is mostly about measuring the time it takes to create a bunch a bunch of objects, like uh, fifty thousand. Um, and also with some reads inside, uh, you can see that using a dict or a, or a, or a simple namespace is super fast. Um, then you have uh, you have a, 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 I can't read my slide uh, name tuples uh, like collection name tuples so the non typed one um, Name to the typed one is also great, uh, and Singy, I will talk about it later. And then ATT here and uh, and the data classes are pretty much at the same level of performance. But Box is like three times, like you, you take three three, more, three times more uh, time to uh, create a box than a than a data class. So that's not very nice. Uh, so let me introduce you to Thingy. Uh, Thingy is a library we, we have developed uh, at Numbly. Uh, it's Python 2.7 and 3.4 plus compatible. It can, you can install it on uh, pip, it's on GitHub. Uh, it looks like simple namespaces, uh, but it has that view method, which allows you to go back to a dict. Um, and the, the really nice thing about Thingy is that you can have different kind of views. You can define new views. So for example, uh, if I want to be able to have in my dict uh, the result of the property I've defined, uh, I, can, I can define a view 
uh, called uh, with total, for example, uh, and include the, to the total cost inside. And when I, c when I will call uh, item view with total, uh, I'll get a dict with the property included. You can also exclude fields, uh, select exactly which fields you want, that kind of stuff. So, for example, when you're in the context of uh, a REST API, for example, uh, back it by something with MongoDB, it's really nice because you can say exactly for each view of your API uh, what field you want to return. Uh, and by the way, we have, uh, we have uh, MongoThingy, which is uh, basically an ODM uh, object document mapper um, based on Thingy, uh, which is something a bit like Mongo Engine. But, uh, but much more simple and much more close to uh, PyMongo query language. So it's Q&A time, but I'll start with a self Q&A. So the reason I made this talk in the first place is because I was developing Thingy and I saw the data class thing and I thought, shit, maybe what I'm doing for a year is completely useless. Maybe they just implemented something in Python that's doing exactly the same thing. Uh, but as we've just uh, seen, it's, I think there is place for both uh, because data class is more uh, on, on typed stuff and, and really uh, defined field, that kind of stuff. Uh, Singy is much more about uh, freedom and, and you can put uh, whatever you want inside. So the answer is no. Uh, does data class deprecate uh, name tuples? Honestly, yes, definitely. Uh, whatever modules are from. Does it deprecate SQL Alchemy? <laughs> uh, SQL Alchemy is a, a big, big thing. It's used by a lot of people, so I don't see it deprecated uh, anywhere soon. Uh, but I could imagine a rebase of SQL Alchemy on data classes. I don't think it's going to be soon, but it could happen. Does it duplicate Marshmallow? Uh, so for those who don't know, Marshmallow is a validation library uh, where you can define class uh, which, uh, with uh, each field being like uh, a rule to, to, that your field must, uh, must comply to. Uh, so once again, I don't think so. Uh, but I think Marshmallow could rebase uh, on data classes, uh, especially since data classes was thought with, uh, with ex extendability in mind. Uh, so it's, it's really like you can plug third party libraries on it. So maybe that's a good idea, I don't know. And the last question uh, would be, does it deprecate class? And I leave that, que that question to you. Thank you. All right, so we have time for maybe one more question. Okay, then, oh. I suck at live questions, so please speak well. <laughs> um, did you run more benchmarks on all the competitions? Because yeah. I can imagine that you would uh, use data classes or address or name tuples if you have a lot of instances like database rows, and then uh, memory consumption may be uh, important too, for example. Yeah, I didn't make more benchmarks. Uh, I really did just made that benchmark because I wanted to use in a real world example, uh, like in a real world situation, I wanted to use Box, and that's really what made me like retire Box. So that's what I showed that benchmark. But yeah, feel free to do more benchmarks. <laughs> Any other questions? Last one. It could be fast. It's a bit of philosophy. Don't you think that sometimes yeah, it's good to have a clear model? Because you said uh, Mongo, it's OK to, to scale. But uh, at the moment, you get too many fields. So, so actually, uh, no. In the latest version of Mongo, you, have, you can enforce schemas uh, directly inside the database. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, but it's like the, the database administrator work. It's not your work as a developer. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there are situations where you want uh, clear schemas, right? And, and I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm just saying that sometimes 
you don't want that. Yeah, it's basically for error proning, and uh, when your system becoming larger with lots of, lot of uh, parameters, lot of uh, properties, it's easy to make a mistake somehow. Yeah, that's a trade-off, as yeah. always. Thank you. All right, thank you. One big round of applause for Guillaume.